वेलकम माय डियर फ्रेंड्स माय सेल्फ प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर राजेंद्र रघुवीर देशपांडे फ्रॉम पुणे महाराष्ट्र स्टेट इंडिया वुड लाइक टू वेलकम यू ऑल इन माय आयुर्वेदा एकेडमी चैनल एंड वी आर अटेंडिंग वी आर डिस्कसिंग इन द क्लास ऑफ स्वस्थ वृत्त सब्जेक्ट दिस इज द टॉपिक्स रिगार्डिंग द पेपर टू सो बिफोर आई स्टार्ट द टॉपिक्स जस्ट हैव अ लुक प्लीज ओपन योर नोटबुक राइट डाउन द डेट दैट इज टेंथ ऑफ डिसेंबर टू एंड स्वस्थ वृत्त पेपर टू टूडे वी विल डिस्कस ऑफ कोर्स इट्स लाइक अ ट्रेलर ईच एंड एवरी स्टूडेंट इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू टू परचेस मिनिमम टेक्सट बुक ऑफ देअर लाइकिंग विच टेक्सट बुक यू कैन परचेस दैट आई हैव ऑलरेडी मेड अ वीडियोज एंड यू कैन अकॉर्डिंगली परचेस मराठी हिंदी इंग्लिश वॉट एवर लैंग्वेज यू वॉन्ट वन टेक्सट बुक एंड दीज पर्टिक्युलर माई क्लासेस आर फॉर गिविंग यू द कॉन्फिडेंस ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट एंड लिटिल बिट बेटर अंडरस्टैंडिंग but i am i am definitely knowing that this is not all self study in the medical colleges is very much essential so my dear friends today's topics are disposal of the dead body then we will discuss something about the meteorology that is the environmental weather and all these things then next topic is a disaster management first you just write down the points so disposal of the dead body then meteorology then the disaster management after that we will go on the next page and we will discuss about the occupational health because there are many uh, occupational uh, what you can say the diseases that we are going to discuss which causes are there what are the clinical features and why they are taking place so occupational health is also next our topic then also prevention of the occupational diseases how we can prevent particular diseases that we are going to discuss so before starting the exact the matter in front of you please let me tell you please let me tell you the paper 1 there are two papers swastha vrutta paper 1 and paper 2 paper 2 is related with the samajik swastha vrutta uh, social the, uh, the modern science it is called as a preventive and social medicine so we are will talk about the social medicine in the part 2 according to ayurveda so they uh, sorry paper 2 and in paper 2 there are part 1 that is part a and part b so what are the topics 17 topics of part a listen very carefully the first is a janapada dhonsa that is related with the epidemic and endemic and the pandemic recently we have a whole world has suffered from the pandemic that is corona next we had discussed in the previous videos regarding the vayu or the air third topic is a jala or the water fourth topic was i have discussed bhumi and nivas sthan that is land and the housing fifth topic is related with the prakash that is lighting sixth was dhvani pradushan that is noise pollution seventh was vikiran that is radiation problems eighth apadravya nirmulan that is disposal of the solid waste ninth mal nishkasana vyavastha that is excreta disposal tenth that we are going to see today shav vinash that is disposal of the dead body 11th rutu evam vatavarana gnanam that is meteorology 12th disaster management 13th occupational health these we are going to discuss next 14th is a school health services 15th 15 epidemiology 16th 16 non communicable diseases epidemiology and 17th chikitsalaya bhavana that is hospital bedding these are the 17 points from paper 2 part a what is paper 2 part b listen carefully there are 12 points for example prathamik swasthya samrakshana प्राथमिक स्वास्थ्य संरक्षण दैट इज प्राइमरी हेल्थ सेंटर्स पीएचसी सेकंड टॉपिक परिवार कल्याण योजना परिवार कल्याण योजना थर्ड टॉपिक टॉपिक मातृ शिशु कल्याण योजना मदर एंड चाइल्ड मातृ शिशु फोर्थ प्रिवेंटिव जेरिएट्रिक्स प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ द ओल्ड एज देन फिफ्थ डब्ल्यू एच ओ वर्ल्ड हेल्थ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन sixth topic international health agencies seventh topic alma ata declaration ala me alma ata declaration 
एट नेशनल हेल्थ पॉलिसी टू थाउजेंड टू नाइन्थ हेल्थ स्टैटिस्टिक्स टेंथ स्वास्थ्य प्रशासन इलेवंथ नेशनल हेल्थ प्रोग्राम्स एंड ट्वेल्थ नेशनल न्यूट्रिशनल प्रोग्राम्स सो माई डियर फ्रेंड्स आई हैव डिस्कस्ड और अदर नेरेटेड द इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स फ्रॉम द स्वस्थ वृत्त पेपर टू पार्ट एंड पार्ट बी नाउ लेट एस सी डिस्पोजल ऑफ द डेड बॉडी मेथड ऑफ डिस्पोजिंग द डेड बॉडी अफकोर्स इफ द टाइम परमिट्स आई विल गिव सम मोर डिटेल्स अबाउट इट बट बर्निंग इज द बेस्ट आइडियल मेथड burning or cremation one is a traditional method of burning in the open air but that is very problematic because lot of impure gases will be in environment and some types of the respiratory problems uh, can occur uh, the people living in the surrounding locality then electrical cremation is the number one best method in today's era that there are no much more side effects rather i can say no side effects but this traditional method of burning can cause the air pollution then burial there are also some problems uh, buried in the ground then that can also contaminate your land but that we will discuss after some time or if the time permits in the some next lectures more important topic that we are going to discuss is a metrology so here i will mark for the your concentration purpose now look at this marked portion rutu evam vatavaran jnanam what is weather the state of atmosphere the state of atmosphere with respect to the heat or cold with respect to the cloudiness with respect to the dryness with respect to the sunshine wind and rain all we have to study because you know ayurveda has a very important siddhanta in the first year bms in the kriya sharira subject that is lok purusha sammita jnana that is purusha is a human body and lok is a surrounding nature which includes the metrology so ayurveda believes that there is a correlation in between human body and the nature both are affecting each other especially nature is affecting to your human physiology and the pathology also so we have to make the balance equilibrium in the environment and of us that is called as homeostasis so we must know these particular factors of the weather climate what is climate the weather pattern or the condition in an area over a long period according to this i think you know about the classification of desh huh? anupadesh jangal desh and sadharan desh i am living in pune city maharashtra state india where the atmosphere is balanced that not too much rain and not too much heat also like the deserts area so ayurveda says this is called as a sadharana desh optimal type of the climate or the weather is there but if you go to the uh, rajasthan like uh, desert areas the temperature is very high in maharashtra state nagpur city in the summer season is very very hot so we can call these hot areas where the greenery is less where the rain is less that area is called as jungle the people get confused because they think the students especially jungle means forest so where there are forest they say it is a jungle no that is wrong jungle desh is a very dry climate with a very very much hot a desert area and what is anup opposite lot of rain for example in maharashtra state chera punji and some uh, areas uh, for example uh, in the india that orissa some type very very heavy rain kerala some part of the kerala so tremendous heavy rain and tremendous forest that particular area is called as a kapha predominant area and this uh, diseases for example bronchial asthma is more getting bad in the anup pradesh and that's why ayurveda at uh, extreme level also suggests that you have to get transfer from this area to that area so this is all together ayurvedic aspect behind this climate factors influencing weather and the climate how this can differ for example the temperature grishma rutu how hot or how cold atmosphere is that one has to study and doctor has to make some correlation 
between the patient disease and is there an effect of the environment or the climate. Some diseases will be more predominant, kapha dominant uh, diseases are more common in Anupa Pradesh or where there is a lot of cold and rain. And uh, type of the vata and the pitta dominant diseases, they are very common in the Jangala Desh where there is a too much hot and the dryness is there. Then humidity. Amount of water vapor in the atmosphere that we have to know. Atmospheric pressure, that is air pressure, as we go up and up and up hills, for example, Himalayan mountains, naturally oxygen density becomes less and the people, the person can start breathless. So that is because of the less oxygen. So the effect of going high altitude or on the low altitude, that altitude differences in the physiology of our body. Then wind, movement of the air, rainfall, all these factors are very much uh, essential to be considered when we are talking about the patient's diseases or patient's health. This is a broad introduction of the environment. Now we will go for the further topic that is called as a disaster management. Nowadays or even any time in the, uh, our time clock, that disaster management is a factor that each and every person should be aware of because it's like accidents and a prevention is always better than cure. This is very applicable to this disaster management also. What is disaster? Hazards resulting in an event causing significant physical damage or the destruction of the health. A disaster is defined any occurrence, any event that causes destruction, ecological disturbances, loss of human life or worsening of the health and health services on a major adequate to warrant an extraordinary reaction from outside affect, uh, than the affected community or the area. You know that whenever there, uh, now first we will see the, what are the natural disasters. Here you can see the earthquakes. That's why you know that in Japan, for example, earthquakes are very, very, very common. So naturally they have modified their uh, uh, management of living. Their houses are more type of the wooden. Why? Because if this happens, disaster, then naturally the many people can be protected from the falling of the hard stones and the cement concrete type of the material. Because if you do the RCC construction, then if it is earthquake, the lot of uh, what you can say, the life can be in end danger. So to prevent that, the Japan houses are more type of the wooden because of the lot of fear of the earthquakes. Then landslides, this is also common in India. If you go to the Northeast or even the Maharashtra state, even if you consider the Bombay Puna highway or uh, old highway or the new highway, there are some mountains at some areas. And these mountains, because of the heavy rain, they lose the contact from the sand and the stones, they start falling down. And if that occurs all of a sudden, then naturally it, uh, it's a tremendous loss of the uh, properties like the cars and all these things and also the prop, uh, in danger of the life. So many death can occur. Landslides are also common in the uh, Himachala Pradesh where there is a snowfall and a lot of uh, now there is an illegal type of the construction on the mountains and that gets in danger with this landslides type of the problems. So this is also to be uh, noted that when we talk about the disaster, natural disaster, and then uh, everybody blames uh, that this happens all of a sudden and nobody was aware of. But the, there is also fault of the human nature. We are also uh, too much craving to, uh, we are not sufficient having the land and then we go on encroaching the mountains. The encroachment of the mountains can make the imbalance in the environment and that gives this type of the disaster. Then volcano eruptions at some places, floods, even in the uh, Maharashtra state, uh, even in the uh, India, there are a lot of places where the flood is very, very common. Okay. So uh, then hurricanes, then uh, tornadoes, then cyclones and uh, tsunami, tsunami. These type of the disaster are always called as a natural disasters. Now we will go for man-made disasters. 
just uh, allow me few seconds few minutes to make that portion prominent for you man made disasters i think uh, this is totally 100% the fault of the human being war for example uh, russia and ukraine this war is going on then israel and the palestinians they have this particular war and these wars doesn't cause only the local effects of course there is a very bad type of the uh, what you can say the civil people they suffer from these attacks and the wars but whole world also get affected because of the uh, improper su supply of the food or the oils and all these things so road traffic accidents are very casual now in india because uh, there is no planning of the roads then the road conditions are very bad then there is no control from the traffic police on these uh, vehicle riders they have the uncrossing the their speed limits and wrong side uh, traffic and all these things so this is very very sad thing that road traffic accidents are now a major cause of the death also then stampedes fires industrial accidents nuclear explosions or the nuclear radiations these are called as a man made disasters now epidemiologic surveillance and the disease control surveillance is an essential part of communicable diseases control and prevention this includes the following components how we can prevent or how we can control this particular epidemiological uh, problems monitoring the disease trends for example in particular area uh, for example uh, in uh, rainy season in my uh, localities i have found that there is a, a water contamination because of some uh, technical problems and many houses are patients getting of jaundice infective hepatitis because of the uh, polluted water so this type of then i have to be make uh, what you can say the survey and also then the people uh, awareness and education society education that see uh, you have to boil the water 20 minutes and then you have to drink uh, uh, take precaution not to be get contacted with this disease person etc so this is called as taking control of the communicable diseases for the preventive purpose monitoring the progress of the disease control objectives especially you have observed all these things in the corona period whole world is collecting the data was collecting the data they were uh, always updated on the who site and they were warning some areas now this is more uh, vulnerable area and take the precaution on that area estimating the size of a health problem how many people may suffer you know uh, during the corona even the government has taken place that how many more beds will be required and there were separate camps or the tents were a uh, temporarily arrangement were prepared then oxygen cylinders were asked uh, and all the emergency managements were there uh, with these camps of uh, having the different uh, beds and all these things so this type of planning is always necessary whenever there is a disaster type of the problem estimating the size of health problem detecting the outbreaks of the infectious diseases and identifying the research one has to make some research also which uh, method will be more applicable more suitable etc now we will go further with the some next discussion about the occupational health so again as usual please allow me to mark the topic focus on this topic and we will start discussion occupational health is an important branch of preventive medicine this occupational health includes promotion and protection of the health of the worker who is working who are working in that particular factory or the industry early diagnosis and prompt treatment of occupational diseases and last is the rehabilitation in case of disablement rehabilitation i think in each and every factory and company when there are the construction of the factory construction of the industry there are some rules and regulations from the local corporations and the state level also and some rules are centrally based also in those rules they have some compulsions for example the owner should make the medical insurance or the accident in insurance of each and every factory worker that is mandatory then they have to give some protective uh, measures for example if somebody is working near the fire 
or the electrical fires, then he has to wear some typical goggles. If somebody is working with the, some, uh, what you can say, the sewages and all these rubbish things, then one has to do the hand gloves and uh, protective kits. So this type of the arrangement, then they should be given special allowance if they have to work in uh, some unnatural uh, environment. So, and also medical checkup. Each and every factory has their own full-time doctors. Remember this. Full-time, whenever the factory is going on, maybe 12 hours or maybe 18 hours, maybe 24 hours, the doctor should be available to treat the casualties. Remember this thing. Somebody has a machine and uh, his uh, finger gets cut. So, Im immediately there should be first aid at least. And then he will refer that particular case to the civil uh, hospital. So, this is regarded with the occupational health. Now, we will see what are the details of the occupational hazards. So, these are the occupational problems or the damages. An occupational health hazard, damage, hazard is a damage experienced in the workplace, in the factory, in the industry. Physical hazards, what is happening? Extreme of temperature or extreme of humidity, abnormal air pressure, vibrations, noise, radiant energy. This can, all the factors can damage the worker who is working in this particular atmosphere or the surrounding. Then chemical hazards because of the dust, because of the toxic substances, because of the poisoning. Third is a biological hazard that is a damage because such as the tetanus, anthrax disease, leptospirosis, fungal infections, and scabies. These are also common in the factory workers or industry workers. Mechanical hazards because of the accidents, because of the injuries from the machinery parts. As I have told you, some people may get cut the fingers or the joints and all these things. Then social or psychological related to the work environment, such as the very tensions and worry related to the co-workers. There may be some disputes. Then also fight between employee and employer. Some policies are not accepted by the, the workers. So they fight with the owner. Uh, job security. Some are the daily wages. And they see they are there for years together. But these daily wages feel that we are insecure. At any day, we can be kicked out. So for that matter, they want that they should be regularized in the muster. Huh? So job security and the conditions of employment that are more important. Now we will go further to check what are the different hazards, how they are taking place and what to do to control that particular hazards. Just a moment so I can try to make my screen a little bit less shorter. But anyway, I, at the moment it seems to be... Uh, just a moment, if I can do that. But anyway, okay. So here you can see the diseases. For example, here on the left side, causative factors, clinical features, and prevention and management. First is a lead poisoning. Lead poisoning. Lead arsenate. These are the chemi uh, uh, chemical. Then lead oxide, lead carbonate, etc. Used in the batteries. So whenever there is industry or the factory related with the battery making, then glass industry, then shipbuilding, printing industry, and pottery. In all these places, this lead poisoning is common. So clinical features, inorganic lead will cause the abdominal colic, that is severe spasmodic pain. There may be constipation, blue line here, here on the gums. Then there may be anemic condition, less hemoglobin, then wrist drop. Can you see here wrist and that neurological problem? You cannot work, that wrist drop. So all the motor power is lost. Uh, 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 that means next to the that particular uh, joint. So this is called as a wrist drop. Now this is normal and this is wrist drop. So loss of power, loss of power, wrist drop. Then uh, you can see over there uh, foot drops. Just I have seen you the foot. Uh, of uh, wrist drop. Similarly, in the leg, there may be foot drop. Organic lead, it will cause insomnia, loss of sleep, then severe headache attacks, mental confusion, and delirium. 
so these are all the things that we have to see i will see that if i can make a little bit bigger this screen yes i think it will be better for you am i right our students are you agree with this this is better so here you can see prevention and management so lead poisoning you can uh, do some alternative arrangement substitution isolation ventilation should be proper periodic checkups of the workers saline purgation and pencil amine this that particular medicines can be given in the lead poisoning cases now we will go further now we will talk about the mercury poisoning so i will like to make this is concentrate on this mercury poisoning so there may be uh, where this particular uh, hazards can occur which are those factors that is dental medicine then battery ceramics then electro planting in all these places uh, that workers can suffer from mercury poisoning so there may be stomatitis uh, uh, like uh, ulcers aphthous ulcers fitted uh, what you can say the uh, smell or the death then sponginess of the gums sponginess falling of the teeth anemia may be there muscular tremors and paralysis this is because of the mercury poisoning here proper ventilation should be there enclosures and personal protection should be given to handle this particular mercury uh, element we will go further this is called as a arsenic poisoning manufacturers of the semiconductors fossil fuel burning sorry uh, wood preservatives then herbicides and matchsticks in all these factories there is a chances of arsenic poisoning so what will happen painful eruption on the mucous membrane conjunctivitis then edema of the eyelids vomiting abdominal colic with marked diarrhea that is loose motions a pain in abdomen will be there anemia will be there local irritation around the mouth nose and armpit so these are the conditions or the symptoms because of the arsenic poisoning what to do removal from the site is necessary the worker has to take away then gastric lavage because this is a emergency one has to admit the patient in the icu so there we can give the gastric lavage within 24 hours of ingestion and then symptomatic treatment can be given so my dear friends we will talk about the next occupational hazard that is called as a silicosis silicosis where this can happen dust containing free silica from mining of coal then mining of mica mining of gold mining of silver mining of lead in all these mines silicosis can happen pottery ceramic industry then sand blasting building work iron and steel in all these places silicosis is possible what are the symptoms in early stage irritant cough <laughs> like that silico it is mainly affecting the respiratory tract dyspnea on exertion that is breathlessness and also the chest pain advanced stages with silicosis impairment of total lung capacity you know that now we have the computerized uh lung lung function test we can test vital capacity then inspiration uh, reserve capacity all we measurements we can do uh, lung function test that is called as a lung function test so x ray shows the snow storms appearance in the lung field typical features snow storms like the white spots all over because of the silicosis so what to do control of the dust by substitution enclosure isolation should be done hydro blasting can be done personal protection and regular health checkup so early detection of respiratory problem can be uh, treated very nicely uh, as per the uh, allopathy or the ayurved we will go on the next slide i am sorry just i want to go further and yes we we, we can go like this okay so prevention of the occupational diseases but before that there are some thing have remained i can go on this side of the uh, screen and then you can see the different diseases occupational uh, health problems so asbestosis asbestos is a compound made of silica with magnesium iron 
calcium, sodium, and aluminium used in the cement factories, roof uh, tilling, fireproof textile. In all these industries, asbestos, uh, what you can say, the pollution can take place. Clinical features, it is also affecting your respiratory system, fibrosis of the lungs due to the mechanical irritation. X-ray will show the ground glass appearance in lower two-third of the lung period. My dear friends, uh, I am again marking for this. This word you write down. Huh? Ground glass appearance. Ground glass appearance in the lower two-third of the lung field. How to prevent or manage this asbestosis? Control of the dust by substitution, enclosure, hydroblasting, personal protection, and regular health checkup. We will go further. Next problem regarding the occupational health is anthracosis. Anthracosis that is observed in the coal mines. Here, what is happening? Simple pneumoconiosis. Exposure of about 12 years leads to the little ventilatory impairment. Progressive step by step, massive fibrosis of the lungs. Lung area. Respiration area will be less and breathlessness will be more. Disability and sometimes it can go into the death. What to do? Control of the dust by substitution, enclosure, hydroblasting, personal protection and regular health checkups. Early detection is like early management. Let us see the next. This is called as a baga sauces. Baga so, sis, bagasosis. Inhalation of the bagasse or the sugarcane dust. What is this? Sugarcane dust in sugar industries or paper making. Then here you can see thermactinomyces sakai causes it. This particular organism can uh, cause this particular uh, bagasosis. Okay, bagasosis. Breathlessness will be there because respiratory tract is affected. Cough, hemoptysis. Slight fever may be there. Acute bronchiolitis. Skygram shows the malting in the lung or shadows. Impairment of the pulmonary or lung function test that is LFT. What to do? Wet processes, exhaust ventilation, protective mask should be wear and regular health checkup is essential for early diagnosis of respiratory problem by doing auscultation, auscultation of the lungs. Next is a farmer's lung. Next, industrial hazard. This is moldy hair or grain dust inhalation. Then thermolytic actinomyces, sand blasting and building work and iron and steel industry or the factories. In all these uh, places, this farmer's lung condition can occur. What is happening? Acute illness characterized by general respiratory symptoms, fever, chills, Oh, dyspnea without wheezing. Remember, in chronic form, repeated attacks of uh, can cause the patchy fibrosis of the lungs. What to do? Personal protection is essential and we can give the symptomatic treatment. So this is all about the problem with the lungs. And now we will shift our screen on the right side where we will discuss how we can prevent the uh, this particular industrial hazards. So my dear friends, here you can see prevention of the occupational diseases. What to do? First is a uh, education of the workers. Huh? Then you have to educate them how uh, the which are the risk factors in that particular industry or the factory. Then how the person uh, worker can prevent the, those particular um, affection because by wearing the mask or hand gloves and any other protective mechanisms, then which rasayan, which tonic he can take for the building the lung capacity and then general tonic, uh, preventive aspect and regular checkups. These are the only three or four important steps that has to be followed as a health promotion. Specific protection like medical measures, engineering measures, early diagnosis and treatment is very much essential. Then disability limitation, and the rehabilitation. Suppose 
uh, one gets the paralytic attacks or one gets the injury in the spinal cord and his uh, right leg or the left leg or both the legs become paralyzed. So the physiotherapy treatment should be there. Ayurvedic, Snehana, Svedana, Pasti, Nastya, this type of the treatments also can be adopted in this particular industrial hazards or the occupational health problem. So my dear friends, today we have seen this uh, prevention of the occupational diseases. Then we have talked a lot about the, which are the different causative factors for these occupational diseases, then uh, clinical features, and also we have seen the prevention and the management. Then also we have talked about the disaster management in this session. And to begin with, before that, we have started with the discussion of the disposal of the dead body. And then we also talked a little bit about the metrology that is Rutu Evam Patavaran Jnana. So my dear friends, this is the matter that was in front of you. And now, just we will try to make some revision of some previous chapters that we have finished. So now the audio lecture will start. So make a full concentration and try to get the understand. If you want, you can open the topic Bhumi or the land. It's like a revision. Okay. So there is a most important construction of the houses and construction of the buildings that is called as a Nivas Sthanasya Bhumi Shodhanam. Okay. So all these buildings, all this construction should be properly lighted and properly ventilated. If anybody wants, he can start writing dictation. Properly lighted and properly ventilated. Next, about the foundation, the base of that whole building, foundation. Foundation should be solid and substantial bed, B-E-D bed of good cement concrete. Good cement concrete should extend right down six inches beyond the, beyond the footing of the walls on every side. Okay. Depth of concrete depends upon the weight of the wall. How much weight that base has to be bared? Accordingly, the thickness is decided. Plinth height, P-L-I-N, plinth height should be two to three feet. Next topic of that bhumi or the land, dampness of the house. Damp, damp, area is a damp of house. What are the causes for the dampness? Number one, why the dampness problem arises? Rising damp. Number two, percolating damp. Your walls, here on the right side there is a wall. Percolating dampness. That means on the other side I have the neighborhood. And that neighbor's wall has not been cemented or painted. And from that, the rain enters into my wall and that percolating of the dampness. Then roof, top, top, roof leakage may be there. Okay. So sometimes the video is automatically going. Again, damp proof course in the construction, during construction, a layer of, a layer of, Impervious material. Impervious. I-M-P-E-R-V-I-O-U-S. Impervious material should be laid horizontally along the entire thickness of each wall. That is called as a damp proof course. Next, material used for that is a two layers of slates. Damp proof bricks are used. Stone, one inch thick, made of cement and stone dust. Next, I am talking about in the bhumi or the land or the building, walls. All these walls constructed of brick or stones or concrete or wood. Walls can be of any material. Bricks should be properly bounded. Walls should be plastered from outside and inside. These walls are lime washed 
and oil painted, oil paint should be used. Chimneys for going out the uh, fumes, chimneys should be constructed. Then there should be in the building doors and windows. They may be sufficient in number. The most important word is write down cross ventilation, underline cross ventilation. One side here exactly opposite uh, window should be there. So it is called as a cross ventilation. Then about the living rooms and the bedrooms, there should be maximum sunlight and they have the pleasant outlook. Ventilation should be proper. Now, house and building, that is Nivas Yogya Griha. Nivas Yogya Griha. That is essential for healthy life, healthy, the area where we are constructing this house. This should be suitable and healthy site should be there. Consideration of the dryness, consideration of the warmth, consideration of light, consideration of air is must there. Clay and alluvial soil should be avoided. Clay and alluvial soil should be avoided. Best soils are rock and well-drained gravel. Well drained gravel. Places near the trenching grounds or the factories should be avoided. Should be avoided. You should not purchase the house near that particular factory. Building should be open east and south to allow free passage of light and air. We are talking about bhumi, land. Construction of back to back house is discouraged. In some Grama Panchayat, rural areas, there is back-to-back -back, uh, building. That is not correct. Because cross-ventilation is impossible in such houses. Next topic or next title, requirements and standard of fitness of good house. Which house can be considered as a good house? Number one, free from serious dampness and adequate facilities for safe water supply should be there. Adequate sanitary facilities should be there. Number three, built in ideal ground with healthy environment. Fourth, separate house for domestic animals. Many people, they are fond of dogs and all these things, but separate house should be there. They should not uh, sit or they should not sleep with you in the bed. That is very uh, hazardous for getting any health issues. Then about the kitchen, which is called as a park shala. Please write down park shala, that is kitchen. It should be detached side to prevent the smoke from entering into the living room. Number two, kitchen. Kitchen should not be near to the privy. P R V Y, P R I V Y, near to the private, near to the toilet, near to the bathroom. No, kitchen should not be attached. Kitchen should not open towards the roadside because of the fear of the exposed to the lot of lot of dust with the microorganisms. Next is a water closet of privies, that is shaucha layer or the toilets. This is built in the detached portion, separate in the building. Sufficient distance from the living room and kitchen, this particular toilet should be away. Proper arrangement for disposal of excreta. So this was in short, the talk about bhumi or the land. Okay. Now I would like to start some revision, some revision regarding the Prakash or light. Some small topics I am taking right now. Some small revisions. Okay. Prakash or light. Write down the title. Give the title. Sunlight Prakash. Surya Rashmayaha. Sun rays. Surya Rashmayaha. Sunlight is very much essential for the life. Everybody knows that energy first is trapped by the plants. Photosynthesis. And then we eat the vegetables, then that energy is come from the 
plants to us. So sun to plants, plants to human being. Seven different colors with invisible rays like ultraviolet and infrared rays. Arrangement for the sunlight. Area of the windows should be 20% of the area of the ground. How much area should be windows? 20% of the area of ground. Number two, working place in low light creates the problem of vision. The person working in the mines, they may suffer from this inadequate or the low light over there. Everybody knows that sunlight gives you the vitamin D. Sunlight is necessary for health. Earth receives 4,000 calories of heat per square inch per minute from the sun. Ozone gas purifies the air. Remember this name, ozone. Write down, ozone. Vitamin D is formed under the skin, under sun rays. So in the morning, tender sunlight, tender sun rays are very much good to get the proper vitamin D. And vitamin D synthesis makes the calcium absorption very easy. And calcium and phosphorus are very much essential for the bones, bony joints, teeth, and also for the hair. So sun rays, sunlight is very good for all these things. Next, in naturopathy, naturopathy, naisargopchar, sunlight helps to cure tuberculosis and skin diseases. Next point on the next line, very hot season, like in summer, there is a too much heat, then it can have the what you can say, the different problems. For example, heat exhaustion takes place. Then there may be giddiness, fainting, fever, and the last but not least, that is sunstroke, which can be fatal, sunstroke. Then sun rays have the capacity of destroying the bacteria. So this is very much essential. As I have told you, in naturopathy, sunlight helps to cure the tuberculosis and the skin diseases. Now, important sources of light and their properties. Candle. What is the use of candle nowadays? This is useful in emergency. If you lost everything, electricity, your mobile is already discharged, no battery. So what you will do? So candles are the traditional but very useful uh, material for the emergency. Oil lamp, maybe of kerosene. In the olden days, the cooking was done on this kerosene uh, lamp. Gives the smoke and pollutes in the environment. So contamination, impurity is very common in the environment because of the oil lamp. Gas lamps are less smoke. Then electrical lights come. No pollu pollutants. Gives the continuous proper and already good light, electrical light. Tube light do not trouble the eyes. Sodium mercury vapors. On roads, you can see these uh, sodium mercury vapors. Public places, also you can see this particular sodium uh, mercury vapors. Then electricity for light, maximum advantages. Disadvantage is electrical shock and that can cause the death. Okay. So my dear friend, it was the small revision of the Bhumi, land and also second topic, Prakash and the light. Now I will see that whether there is any still short topic. Okay. We will see about this disposal of corpse. Last six minutes, my dear friend, Swasthavrutta lecture is going on. Professor Deshpande giving the very good audio clip. Disposal of corpse, that is dead body, which is called as a Shavavinashana. Disposition of the dead body can occur, can take place, can we do with the various 
different things. Number one, burning of the dead body. Number two, cremating the dead body. Cremating, C-R-E-M-A-T-I-N-G. Number three, exposing the dead body to the atmosphere. Just exposition. Number four, leaving the dead body to the flowing water of river, which is the worst thing in the world. If anybody does still doing that, it's a bad, 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 and legally it is punishable. But just now I have narrated burning, cremating, exposing to the atmosphere and leaving the dead body in the flowing water. First, burning. Person died previously in the olden days because of the smallpox, leprosy or plague should be wrapped in a cloth soaked in 5% phenyl or the cresol. Main objects behind taking bath by the relatives, observing the avoidance of social contacts. What is the purpose? Is to prevent the spreading of the disease. By burning, water pollution can be avoided. Burning on the death bed. Cremation ground should be far away from residential area and it should be near to the bank of river, that dead death bed. Death bed should be away from the city and near to the bank of river. Next, electric furnaces. Please write down electric furnace. Seven feet by 2.5 feet size furnace is used. Advantages and disadvantages of electrical furnace. Proof like murder case or poisoning case is vanished. So whenever there is a suspicion or FIR, uh, a police complaint that that uh, particular use of electrical furnace uh, should not be done unless and until there is a special permission from the law, from the legal, from the police, from the court. You should not, uh, or, uh, what you can say, the, burn that particular body. But this can be avoided by proper legal death certificate. Death certificate is issued only when the doctor or the local, pers uh, local uh, authority accept that this particular death is a natural death and there is no any uh, bad, uh, what you can say, the cause behind that. Advantage of electrical furnace, pollution of water, pollution of air, pollution of soil is totally avoided. Spreading of obnoxious gases is also avoided. Next point about disposal of dead body is a cremating C R E M A T I N G. There is a cremation ground. Cremation ground. Place where the dead bodies are buried. Religions like Muslims, Christians follow the tradition to cremate the dead bodies. Body get decomposed due to microorganisms present in the soil. Disadvantages of cremating. Disadvantages, not good. Cremating is not good. Why? Poisonous gas may be given out when decomposition takes place. This is the first disadvantage. Number two, body get decayed and poisonous chemicals are formed. Number three, harmful organisms Organisms get mixed in the soil and water. Water and soil pollution may occur because of the cremation. I am talking disadvantages of cremation. Next, wild animals try to remove the body from the cremation place. What is the disadvantage of cremation? To prepare and maintain the graveyard is very, very expensive. Next, 
precautions for constructing the graveyard this is the title this graveyard should be away from the city long distance away from the city number 2 around that graveyard there must be ample of trees many 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 trees should be there number 3 soil should not be sticky graveyard graveyard soil should not be sticky then wells or ponds should not be in the vicinity of graveyard in the vicinity ditch depth ditch depth minimum 4 to 5 feet okay now third way of uh, destroying or disposal of dead body is third third type first was burning second was cremation third is exposing to the atmosphere that dead body disposal of the dead body in parshi religion in parshi religion is done by hanging the dead body in a well hanging the dead body in a well of course nowadays the system may have been modified you have to enquire accordingly to the concerned person body absorbs the sun rays and get decomposed gradually what is the most disadvantage of this exposing to the atmosphere atmosphere get polluted atmosphere get polluted so my dear friends today in the swastha vritta lecture dr deshpande has discussed a lot of swastha vritta points from paper 2 part a i wish that like share and subscribe this is my kind request please do this and we will see you in the next lecture of charak uttarardh thank you very much take care and see you soon